Okay, when we last finished our last video, uh, we were at the point where the shader was showing the, uh, the sample point that we had entered into the init area here, where we had set the init count to 1, and we're now ready to, uh, well first we'll go ahead and add a second point. Uh, let's say hits, so 3 equals 1 hits sub 4 equals 1, that'll put it in the corner, hits sub 5 equals say 3, and we'll set the number of hits to 2, and let's see how that looks. Alright, so here we see the two of them together. Alright, so now the next step is to actually send the position of the hit to the script. So let's go ahead and remove these two samples that we did here. And that will remove them from the board. Now we'll go to our projectile, or not our projectile script, we'll go to our uh, quad script. And here on getting hit, we need to do a few things to set up some points. So, first thing we need to do is get our material. And our mesh render. And let's set up our floats that we're going to pass. And account. Okay, and we're going to set up a delay too uh, for sending lots of them. Now, we'll set up the delay start and get our mesh renderer. We'll get our material from the mesh renderer. And then allocate our space for our points. Again, this will hold 32 points, uh, each point having three, an X, a Y, and a Z position. Okay. Okay, so now we want to process in our, once we get a hit of texture coordinates, we will, we've created an array, we've got a hit, so now we want to add, we're going to create a routine actually, let's create a function here. Add hit point passing in the X and Y coordinates. And then we will set them into the array. And for an intensity, we'll pick a random number. Okay. Then we'll increment the number of hits. And we'll wrap it. Okay. Now we're going to send the float array over. So to send our float array over, let's look at our heat map shader here. Let's put it side by side. Okay, so the variable name for our hits here is underscore hits. So to send our points array over, we're going to call 
um, on the material. Set float array. We're going to tell it the name of our array in the shader. In this case, it's sh it's hits, right? And then we're going to give it a pointer to our points. Okay, so that will actually send across the points. Now we want to set uh, hit count across in the shader. So oops. It's called underscore has underscores in it in the shader. That's how you can tell it's in the shader. And then we're going to send it our local hit count. Okay. So when we add a point, it's going to actually update the array. We will add an, a point here when uh, we get one. I'm going to send the texture coordinate x, comma hit texture coordinate y. Okay, and I think that's going to be it. Okay, now we need one more thing we need to do in our update routine. We need to spawn or instantiate uh, a new test sphere. So what we'll do here is go back to our thing here. We'll click on one moment while it loads. Click on our projectile here. I'm going to drag it over into our assets. Then we need to create a resources folder. And I'm going to drag it into the resources folder. This will make it accessible to be instantiated. Okay, so the projectile is in the resources folder now. Okay, so now we want to check how much time has passed. Um, so we're going to say m delay minus equals time dot delta time. And if It's less than or equal to zero. We'll reset it. I'm going to reset it to 0 0.5 seconds. So only the first one will take a little while. And here we're going to say game object equals instantiate uh, from resources. We're going to load a game object, and it is called projectile. Let's make sure that that's what it's called. It's spelled that way. P-R-O-Jectile. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Alright, so that instantiates it. Now we're going to give it a position. Game object transform dot position equals a new vector 3 of random dot range of negative 1f comma 1f random dot range negative 1f comma 1f comma random dot range so negative 1f comma 1f alrighty so that gives it a random position that will run into our quad resets the delay count and let's see, hopefully, let's see how many bugs we have. <laughs> Certainly, we have quite a few. Play. All right. It, okay, so it looks like our positions are not getting sent across properly. So let's see what's going on there. All right, so let's look at our script real quick. I have a feeling I didn't add in the offsets properly. So let's see. Oh, yep. We are passing. We, we need to pass uh, times 4 minus 2 because we have scaled up minus 2. That should bring up uh, our coordinates uh, we need to send across the modified coordinates, not the coordinates that are 0 0.5, 0 to 1. Um, so let's see how that does. Press play. 
dead center, of course. Let's see how the new ones come in. There, there, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. Now, obviously, when it hits 32, it's going to have a sudden reset with everything clearing, but that's okay. And we can see the projectiles are being uh, removed. Like this. Okay. All right, so that seems to work pretty well. So let's do a couple things. Um, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to add uh, a color range into the, the shader so you can pass in a color. So let's see. So over here in our shader, up here under the properties, this is where uh, texture, where things get set. So are passed in from uh, the, ins the inspector. So let's pass in a color value. So we're going to call it color zero. And we're going to call it a color. And we're going to set it equal to, um, let's say, zero, 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 one. And we'll do this for all three. Well, do this a few more times. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, and then we'll put in our point nine, comma point two, comma one, and put in our point nine, comma one, comma point three, comma one. Put in our point nine, comma point seven, comma point one, comma one, and finally our solid red. Now this will show them in the inspector. So let's have a look at that. Oh, we got an error. Uh, line six. Oh, no semicolons in here. old habits. Okay, so over here we see color pickers for each of those colors. And so we'll quick run into our script here. Now, once they get set, <coughs> they come in and are set as the underscore color zero. So what we really need to do is <coughs> down here in our, we need to define them a couple places. We need to put them in here, so they have a place inside of, we need to actually define them in the shader itself. <coughs> so the <coughs> there, then we'll initialize them here. So color zero, and we'll do that for all these. Oops, mess that up. Three, two, what did I do? Two, three, I forgot to uh, add my semicolon here. And four. All right, so that should, on the init function, read in the colors um, and set them. So let's go back to our routine. Press play. Open this up and let's change the greens to say blues. You can see the blue greens change to blues. The yellows you can change to say purples. And you can do any colors you want. So that's an example of how you can pass in values to your shader. Okay, I think that will end this video. It's only 15 minutes. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing another video with some other parameters changed, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, please like and share. I appreciate your time.